In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new Canvas feature in Obsidian. Hello, I'm Randy, and I like to make fun tech videos and tutorials. If you've been wanting to try out or even learn a little more information about Obsidian, I'm going to walk you through what you can do so that you, you know, can use a newer useful feature that they've just added called the Canvas. Let's go. Ever since I started using Obsidian, I would talk about the sacrifices I feel I had made when giving up OneNote. And it seems like most of the things I used to miss from OneNote are now possible in Obsidian with the added benefit of me owning my own data. The first thing you're going to want to do when you try out this Canvas feature is to create a blank canvas. And you can see I've already done that here. If you look on this little area uh, on the left here, the navigation bar I'm going to call it, but if you see this Obsidian's new Canvas feature, that's what I named the canvas, right here it has a little label that just says Canvas. So what you can do is you can either right click on a folder, like right here, and you can click New Canvas, or you could just uh, look on the left side here, the navigation area, and there's these little four squares that says also create new canvas. You can do it that way. And, you know, I think let's just start with that for now. That's, that's easy. And uh, anyways, you can see my new canvas here. It's blank, right? There's nothing in here. You can create that new canvas within a folder in Obsidian or in the main folder for your Obsidian files, but still, it's in a folder. And you can also, like you just saw me do, right-click on the folder in Obsidian File Explorer and select New Canvas. That's that's the, I like doing it that way because it makes me feel, okay, for sure it's going in this folder when I right-click on that folder. It just feels a little more confirmed that way. So now that you've created a canvas, you can now click on it and then begin adding things into it. I'm going to start by adding a card to my canvas. From Obsidian's help documentation slash site, they do state that you can drag files into your canvas from Obsidian or from other applications. For example, markdown files, images, audio, PDFs, or even unrecognized file types. So for now, I'm just going to add a text card. And you can add text-only cards that don't reference a file. You know, like if I was going to grab a file from my active Obsidian projects here and drag it over, that's referencing a file. But you can just do a plain text card from scratch if you just want to start typing something. So to add a new card to your canvas, select or drag the blank file if you want to do it that way. Or just, you know, you can right click here and go to add card. And if you hover over these, right there you got one that says drag to add a card. So I can just drag this, click and drag it, like hold on to it and drag it, and then release. And right there I can type. So that's really cool. It's, it's you know simple and it gives you the options right here immediately they're active you could set the color of that card which i really like that it's simple and just makes it pop you know if you want to just put simple notes in here and make them colored around the notes with that border that's really nice now i will begin just typing something inside that card i will click on the card and you can see i have a cursor there and you can see that i can i can also format the text if i double click on something control b the markdown appears there. It works just like it does in normal Obsidian, where it kind of gives you the little hint of what the markdown looks like. And then when you click out of it, it applies the formatting. So you can see the after the product, I guess, if you will. So let's just keep typing a little more in here. And you see it's got this little scroll bar. And you can scroll if uh, the you want to keep the, the uh, card small. But anyways... You can see it's got this little scroll bar in here, but if you make the card bigger and expand it, yeah, you don't need the scroll bar. And you can change the color of it afterwards. You get, the, you get the idea. Let's add a card from a note. So if we look here, here's all my notes, right? I got one that says Quake Code. This is so pointless. So I play Quake 1 on the internet, the, old, the original Quake 1 video game. I have some Quake Code here. Well, I don't want to go scroll through all this. Maybe I just want to add that note into my canvas. And maybe that note somehow relates to this note. I won't get too far ahead of myself, but let's just start by, remember how I went down here? Drag to add a note from the vault. So I could do it this way, I could drag it that way. I can grab the actual note here from the vault and drag it into the canvas, release, and there it is. Scrollable and all, that's the entire note. Now further, I can go inside this note. Oops, I actually clicked the right side. Let me uh, escape from that, there we go. You can see I grabbed the scroll bar. I, I don't like, that's a little that's a little weird that I, it kind of accidentally grabs the node, but there we go. I wanted to grab the scroll bar and scroll through it. I can make edits to the note. This is the live note. 
So like you can see right here, C vars A. I added to the note and I clicked outside of it. Let's go over here to the actual note, Quake Code. You can see right here, it's edited. So you are editing the file. Now, if I was to go inside the canvas, uh, if I right click on this and go to remove, it doesn't actually remove the note, it removes it from the canvas. But when I did make those edits, you saw they did appear right there, added to the note. So it's kind of nice. You don't have too much data in different places. You can also add media from, say, your file explorer or even a website. You can drag the photo from the browser into Obsidian. I'll start by just showing you that you can right click on this area, the canvas area, and you can select something such as add media from vault. That's if you have something in your folders already or maybe an image you've added to another note, I guess. But let's just click this and I'll show you what I mean. Add media from vault. This is one I pasted earlier. I click it. This is a royalty-free image from pixabay.com. And I can even, here, let's delete this. Let's remove it. I have my browser on my other monitor. I can drag the photo from that, release, and there it is. I can resize it just like you can in uh, for the cards, regular cards with text in them. You can resize this. You can change the color of the border. This is so cool, right? And this is what I was going to get into is linking these different things. So if I draw or click on this little dot and you get a node on each side of the card and I'm going to pick this right side since it's facing this other area and you can connect it to any of the four sides of another card. So now these are kind of like related, right? And it just looks nice, uh, visually appealing, I guess, if you want to make a big layout. And if you, if you wanted to, you can hold your control and mouse wheel out and zoom out and look at it from afar. It's really cool. It also, if you hold your space bar and then click and drag, you can move around that canvas. So just think of it like it's a piece of paper on your desk and you're sliding it around to look at it from different angles or from, you know, different corners of the paper. It's really nice. It just feels natural. Before I talk a little more about connecting cards, I should also mention that you could also embed a web page in your canvas. I personally don't see why I would want to do that, but it's possible. I mean, because I think of websites being dynamic and things being updated, it's not like the note might stay the same or the information would stay relevant, but it's still nice to know that you can do that. I think it's kind of a natural working thing because Obsidian is built from uh, Electron, I believe, and a lot of that is kind of, I mean, it has a lot of relation to web, web browsers, if you will. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, that's how you, you could also embed a web page into your canvas. You know, you copy the link and just bring it into into another card, and it's, it's, it's cool. Connecting cards is what I'd like to talk a little more about, at least for a second, and that's where you draw these little lines that you saw me just do between the cards, and you get to create a relationship between them. And you can use colors and labels to describe how they relate to each other. So you can see here that I connected two cards. I connected this image to this card that's actually a note, but if you click on the... Uh, line right here. You see, I, I double clicked it and now I have a cursor where I can type. And I could just type something like, I don't know, Quake Code is squirrely. I, that means nothing, but I just wanted to show you that you can type something over that line and it's nice. It just kind of sits right in there and looks nice. It's easy. It's better than I could have done with an image editor or it saved me a lot of time from having to do something like that. You saw that uh, earlier. The way I did this was I grabbed the edge of this, this little node right here and I dragged it from here to here. And you can connect multiple notes this way, or multiple cards. Now, if you'd like to disconnect two cards from each other, you can just put your mouse on top of the line. You see when I hover the mouse cursor over it, it kind of widens. Right-click on that and click Remove. And you can see that I removed that little line that connects those two cards. Something else you can do is grouping cards. And you can also group selected cards. And let's start with creating an empty group. And to do that, you right-click on the canvas, and then you select Create Group. So you can see right here, I have the create group option and that group I can just have as a placeholder if I wanted to. And let's just give it the name new group. And you can see already, you probably already noticed that I can give that group a color. Very cool. So if you want to organize things into groups, you're free to do that. Or you can just click, hold and drag like this and select multiple cards and then right click and create a group from that. So let's give that group a name. Now you can see those three cards are in a group. I'm going to 
click, hold the mouse, or <laughs> hold control and wheel out, and you can see I zoomed out, and I could take that group and move it around. This is so awesome. It works so well. Now you can probably see why I mentioned the feature of being able to hold the space bar, click and drag around the canvas, because now once you start adding all of this data in multiple cards on the canvas, it's important to be able to move around and just kind of push things to the side so you can get a look at different areas because it can get overwhelming if you get a lot of stuff going on in this unlimited canvas. You should now have enough information regarding Obsidian Canvas to start building your own. Try it out. I think you might like it. Thanks for watching this video.